Hello and good evening. <laughs> Welcome to the Tyson Marie Show. Tonight, we are featuring the pillar of physical prosperity. As you know, physical prosperity is one of the five pillars of prosperity. So tonight, we are going to see what we can do with this. I'm going to ask Teron to come in. <laughs> and it's his, this is his thing. We got, we got things. <laughs> Hi, Tessa. Hi, Teron. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have them too. I, told, I know. Soon. I said just in case I'm putting them on, you know, just in I case you so drop in. Yes, yeah. it's so always a pleasure. Thank you. I was just thinking of it, and I'm thinking it's physical prosperity, and one of the best people to 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 talk about physical prosperity is you. Oh, and thank and you. and I I thought you know what I'm bringing Amy tonight. So here you are. So I did the introduction of the night already. So today was a very um, difficult day for physical prosperity. Because today, if you were a person that had to either go to the gym or go to the park or go for a walk like me or stretch like me or do things that I do, and it's raining and it was thundering, it was dark, it just had so many things to keep you from coming to do what you want to do. Tell me, because you also had that challenge with COVID and you train people. How do you motivate others to do their stuff when it's so difficult to do it? There's always something in the way. Yeah, so uh, I agree with you that, you know, something on the other will keep happening and that's just life. But if you have your, your eyes on the target, that I have to do this. So there are literally no excuses. So a few droplets of water are not going to prevent me from going to the gym. And if it's too bad that I just can't step out, I have my home. I literally just need a space where I can just put my mat on and I can still get a workout in. It doesn't have to be a killer workout that I have to torture myself, even if it's just an active recovery or just a foam roll or just a little bit of yoga, Pilates. You know, any workout is good as long as you're moving your body. So... There is literally no excuse not to do, uh, you know, anything and just be on the couch. Oh, yeah, it's raining. So I'm just going <laughs> to lay in my bed and just eat potato chips. <laughs> That's how I see it. Well, yeah, I understand that. But what I found out today was that I, I did the morning blessing. And normally I go for this walk. Mm -hmm. But then it started pelting, pelting rain and you could hear the thunder. And I, I looked at it and I thought, okay. What is the benefit of me getting out there and doing this rather than stay home and let the rain control me in the times I am supposed to do it? What, what is the advantage? Like, let, oh, me, let me ask you this question. How did you feel when you went out and you did it anyway? Well, I, I, what I did, as I showed you, and I did in the real, I, put, I have Wellingtons, well, it's just rain boots, but I, I grew up calling them Wellingtons. Mm -hmm. I put them on, uh, hunter boots, that's what they are. Mm -hmm. And then I, I put a, a really colorful, again, um, arrow, Amarok, which is a rain jacket, mm -hmm. and, and a hat, and an umbrella, and I went. And of course, it was pelting rain, and it was cloudy, um, the thunder had stopped. But I kept going and I was slushing and swishing. The boots were fine. But when I came back, it was, it was humid even in the rain. When I came mm -hmm. back, I felt so ex ex exhilarated. I felt really, really good. And I was warm and, like, and hot. I was hot. Mm -hmm. so I went into a shower. But I felt really, really good. And I, I stopped for a moment and I said, you know what? I, I'm so glad I didn't let that, the, the fear of the rain stop me from doing this. That's the answer right there. You feel so good. You feel accomplished that despite the challenge, I did it. And there, it was not a big deal. I just had to put on my boots, put on my raincoat and just do it. So, it, it, you know, sometimes we make it so big in our head. Oh, you know what? It's so difficult. And, you know, we make this so big in our head than it really is. And you did it, right? You feel accomplished. And I, I had the same thing. But, but I, I do. I feel accomplished because I decide, okay, fine. Because I, I, I do not 
like to not do the things that I say I will do. So I am like that. That is just generally me. I step up and I do what I'll do, no matter if I'm clinging by my fingernails. Mm -hmm. But how do you as a coach motivate somebody that is already a weak link in your coaching stream? What do you say to that person? Because I have friends who would just get a blanket, actually get under the covers because it's raining when they're the last person to do that. So what would you say to this um, client of yours who mm -hmm. you know, is, what do you do with them? How do you, what do you say? So I, I tell them that we are part of one team. So I understand that it's not easy to wake up at 6 a.m. and, you know, get ready for a workout. And I tell them I'll be there. So it's like, you know, we're feeding off of each other's energy. So I'm there, I'm ready to go. I've had my coffee and I'm ready. I'm, I have the plan set up and I'm just there for them. And I think that goes a long way for, for anyone, including myself. If I have a coach, then it will just make a whole deal of difference knowing that there is a one person waiting for me who also has the same challenge. He also must have like slept for four, five hours last night, but he's there. He's there, you know, every morning whenever it's time for me to train. So, and then we go through this together. It's, it's never like you're alone, you're doing this. So I tell them the same experiences that I did, that when I went to the gym for the first time in my life and I had to do a single push-up, it was so difficult. I didn't even get one single push-up. So I always have that relatable factor with my clients. And I tell them that, yeah, I understand. It's not easy today, but it's getting better. So I have those. Yeah, here goes Instagram again. <laughs> Instagram is having so much fun with us this week. Oh my God! Yeah, can you just, not hear me? Well, no. From I heard a little, and then it went into its oh, usual Instagram. I'm so sorry. I, I went a whole spiel about. <laughs> I know, but it, apparently you're not the only one. I had it this morning for a paused moment, but you mm -hmm. know what? We will solve it through this. That is so the nothing. long and short of it is that that we, me and my clients, are part of one team. And we go through this together. So they're not alone. I'm not alone. And we go through this together as a team. And you're actually able to sell this with success. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I always know when I, everything you do, you're selling, right? So when you, you're selling that, you have to, what, how do you tell them what is in it for them? And at the bank, we call it with them. What is in it for me? So, so uh-huh. How do you, that person that is sluggish, that never really exercised, now it's raining and you're saying, get to the gym, I'll meet you there in half an hour. Our training session starts in 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. How do you tell them what's in it for them? Because unless they can see that or feel it or hear it or visualize it, there has to be something to get them to believe it. What is it you use to say, that's what's in it for you? So that I'll always circle back to my first session or my first consultation with that client where I deep down into their goals. What do you want to do and why do you want to do it? The why part of it. That I want to do this because that. So I'll always circle back to that. Remember so you what remind, you told me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you go back to that and you tell them, remember on day one, you told me you were looking for this type of result mm -hmm. and you can only do that. Huh? So how do you sell this to an older client who is like, if you do, or if you were to come across an older mm -hmm. client that is very complacent, they, they nurse the ache and the pain. And if you sell them, or if you suggest that you get up and you walk and, and they're still complaining about the ache and the, and the pain, how do you paralyze and um, tell that older client that last week you did it, you felt mm -hmm. better, what is it that's keeping you back? What when they because there's always all the the obstacles in their path. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm tired. I'm old. My bones ache. How do you get around that? So I'll like something that you know. Again, I've learned from you, and I've always been you know coaching and practicing myself. That's just a choice of words. So if the client is telling me, you know, it's it's like aching today, so I'm, I'll tell them to replace it with, oh, it's getting better. So yeah. if the knee's aching or knee is so bad. You know what? It's getting better because last time the depth of your squat was just this much and now it's getting better. Now you're able to squat even deeper. It is getting better. So I tell them, I, I have videos of the, doing it. I, I'll send them real time. I have things documented. So I'll tell them that last week you did, you know, eight reps today, you've done nine. So there is improvement. So like I said, I have all the data and all the things that I can tell them. But more for most part, 
they will tell me themselves that you know I feel better. I feel that I I am improving. So it always usually comes comes from then. I don't even have to tell for most part. What I'm what I'm getting, which is really a strange thing, I'm going to link it, and and I wonder if people you will get it, or I am sure you will. I'm going to link it to selling. Because mm-hmm. everything you're telling me, I like I. Re- if you are a salesperson, you have to look at your sales. Well, I did twenty last week. I'm going to do thirty. Mm-hmm. So, if you are building a house, my dad was an architect, so he's doing this. The progress is constantly going. He has to have progression. So, in phys- so it looks like there is very little in life we do without selling. We sell it, whether it's a metal thing. Mm-hmm. a belief but we are selling we are always selling in life absolutely and and that's what i am seeing with what you're telling me that you're selling them the better part of what they can accomplish mm-hmm. and and if you're selling a good actual service you're selling a service but you're showing them that the service has goods in it for them if i'm a salesperson and i'm making sales and i'm growing my sales i am making doing a service i'm still selling so it looks like everything we do, we are selling. Even when it's a thunderstorm and a rain, we have to convince them, get out there. You're going in circles, okay? <laughs> You're frozen, but that's okay. It's, it's Instagram night to freeze. So while Tyrone has disappeared, since his Instagram is freezing on us tonight, we'll continue. So one of the things I, I'm Rosie's here, and Rosie does a lot of physical, and tonight is physical night. One of the things I notice in physical prosperity is that the work we are doing today, the work we are doing now, is still going to take us through um, further. It's everything in life. I'm see if to run his back. Um, so everything we do, um, we still have that that thing that is happening to us. If we are still selling because. What you do now in your physical, physical. Hello again. <laughs> yeah, you go. This is so I, weird. I could hear you talk the whole time, but it, for some reason it chose to just kick me out of the life. So. That's okay. And Instagram doesn't like me anymore. Instagram has its own issues. I was uh-huh. just even referring to Rosie Rose. She's mm-hmm. there. And I'm saying, I see her doing all those things. And the benefit for her is not today. The benefit for her, I'm trying to sell it to people who don't do physical stuff, that the benefit is for later on. You, you go walking, you exercise, like you train people virtually. Rosie gets into the sauna, then she jumps into a cold ice tub full of ice. Oh, Rosie is fantastic. She, and she's, she's doing that. Amazing, yeah. And, and, the, and she's a nutritionist too. So she's doing those things. And I'm sure with a, with a picture of the future ahead, because I, people don't understand in sometimes when you say physical, they think it's just going to the gym and go to the gym one and component exercise. component of it, yeah. It is one. Mm-hmm. It is one. So, so how do you tie the other parts of stuff that they can do, like going to the sauna and then jumping in the cold water? What is the benefit of that? Do you have any idea? Yeah, so we're always trying to tell them the clients that how the particular exercise or how just coming, showing up to the gym three times or training wherever, you know, directly translates into, you know, there, there is a concept of activity of daily living. It's called ADL. So, you know, just, just to show them how they're supposed to pick up a piece of paper or even a 30 pound dumbbell, it has to be done in a correct form and position. There you go again. Oh my Potter God. on. He's disappearing on us again. So t- I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Don't worry about it. We're getting through it. We, 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 will, we, will ne- we never give up. Yeah. So, in, so Instagram might well get ahead of us. I'm just and the funny going. part is that I can hear you and I can see you in HD quality. So yeah. It's working well for me. So I, I, I can see you, but I can only hear myself at that time, so it doesn't uh, really matter. It's no, maybe the weather gods. <laughs> the weather gods. They're mad at us for criticizing them and telling them that we still did our, our physical um, exercise mm, today. There's no and stopping. There's mm-hmm. no stopping. No, we're not going to stop. So, and it's there to stay. What I know for sure with um, physical prosperity is that in my 20s, I walked. 
I did yoga. I did all of those things. I always told you guys I did yoga when yoga wasn't cool. Mm -hmm. So much so yoga wasn't cool. My yoga teacher was a German lady. And she was explaining to me the benefits. She said, you are like 22. And she said, the benefits of doing stuff now is that by the time you hit 40, you will be the same. Your body will still be able to flip. You'll still be able to twist into that pretzel that you're doing. Exactly. Now. So it's like an investment in yourself. It's, it's an investment in yourself. <laughs> Say that again, because people don't see the People don't hear that. People it's don't an hear that. Investment in yourself. So, if you want to still be functional at when the time your forties, you want to like, like I said, you know, for the older clients, as you ask. So, if I, I'll tell them, if you want to play soccer with your grandkids, you want to move around because you know you want to be doing all of those things. Go for hikes, live your life, enjoy your retirement. You have to invest now. You cannot you expect to. your body to just you know function the way you want it to all of, all of a sudden when you haven't invested in your body in all those years. That's just not a fair expectation. So the work has to be done now. Well, you, you know, I still, when I see myself, I'm able to, to bend and the, the kids have a playhouse and I can fold and get in there or do something like that. I, I don't think of it at the time, but every now and again, her voice comes back. Mm -hmm. And when she says to me, the most important thing to do is to practice all of these things now and continue them. She said, even if the intensity slows down, the point is that, it's better to do it because later on you're going to find that, 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 those things. And she was the first one who told me muscles have a memory. I didn't they know do. much about that. Mm -hmm. And she said, the minute you trigger them again, they're going to answer to you. But it's a constant thing. Here goes to run little thing again. Oh my God. <laughs> I think, like I said, it's just, it's working seamlessly fine for me. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Mine is showing. Okay. So I don't know. But the mm -hmm. thing is that I, what, what we can do is encourage others because even today I, when I went for that walk, my friend called and she said, I said, I'm walking in. And she said, you're walking in the rain. I said, well, if I don't do it today, I'm going to miss it. And I might, when I miss my 30 minute walk, my body tells me you miss a 30 minute walk. I feel it. And it's not because, and it makes me tired. The energy level is so much better. It and is. It is. But you also teach about nutrition. So how do you do the two together? We have talked about it, but I cannot see us ever stop talking about this, about physical activity and nutrition. What do you, you why do you put some of your clients on a plant-based diet? Why? For, for a while. What, do, what is the purpose of that? Okay, so I've been a vegetarian for most part of my life. In fact, like all my life, I've been a vegetarian. So, uh, and when I say vegetarian, I'm, 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 I don't mean vegan, but vegetarian. So uh, I've never had, you know, issues with, uh, you know, inflammation that some of my meat eating friends have told me about or some, you know, digestion problems and all those things. So it, it, it happens and, you know, uh, Belinda will, will, will tell you that she, uh, you know, even saw those documentaries on Netflix about how these athletes completely changed their diet into plant-based and they move so much better. They function so much better and they, they have this constant influx of energy. So um, changing again, again, I'm not opposed to people eating non-vegetarian, but sometimes it has happened and I've seen it that switching to plant-based diet has just worked wonders for a lot of people, especially if they're trying to lose weight, you know, uh, trying to get rid of inflammation, inflammation, or just basically cutting processed food out of your diet just works wonders. So your sleep is better, your performance in uh, exercise is better, and you overall feel just healthy and lighter. And is, isn't that a wonderful feeling? It is a great feeling. I, I have... I have a game changer, exactly. It's really a game changer. I don't eat a lot of meat normally. I do have some. I eat a lot more fruits and vegetables. Like tonight, I did cook rice, but I went into the garden and I grabbed some kale and I chopped it in there and I had it with a little bit of chicken and that was, but it had more kale than rice. Mm -hmm. So I, and then my, my diet consists of banana and apple and fruits most of the day and lots of water. Um, and people ask me if you're not hungry, but I'm not hungry. So what I wanted, what I wanted to ask you, the, the ordinary person doesn't understand the word inflammation in their body and what causes it. Because 
what, what, what are the things that cause inflammation in somebody's body? I know there are lots of people who don't understand that. I have to wait for that answer. I really don't know what inflammation is, but I've heard it talked and Sharon just brought it up. Inflammation from certain foods, acid, acids that are acid, or I don't know much about the diet part of, of the physical prosperity pillar. But one of the things I do know about it is that, <laughs> is that if people talk a lot about People talk about inf a lot about inflammation. So I wanted to know what that was all about. And Tyrone has disappeared. And here he is again. So we'll just put him back on. And maybe we can get him to tell us about it. Tyrone, <laughs> before you disappear on us again, can you tell okay, me about... Okay, I'll try to stay on. Can you, when you can't, it goes, it goes. Mm -hmm. um, explain inflammation for the lay person out there. Like me, I don't get it. I hear it is common. I know foods that helped to eliminate it, like ginger and garlic and onions and turmeric. And turmeric. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell me what these, what, what is, what causes inflammation, and what are the symptoms? Because those other foods will prevent it. And then when you have it, explain all about it. Because so I inflammation really in general means just like swelling up. So certain foods can, uh, you know, cause your digestive tract to, you know, not function the way it is supposed to function. So there could be, uh, you know, s swelling around, uh, how should I say it? Like in a, uh, in a word, in a, in a way that it's, it's, it's easy to understand, like, like a swelling in the body and it, it's almost internal. So, in, and again, if you look at your intestines, you know, they're, almost in an S shape. All the way, so, yeah. Yes. And certain food items can just be there for a long part of time. And, and again, and if you translate into North America, people are not drinking enough water. So basically not flushing things out of your system. The body has to break down the food, extract all the nutrients and flush it out, right? And some of those processes are not happening for a lot of people. And I can even talk about bowel movements and some people do not have a healthy bowel. Okay. So poor Tehran. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have two percent. <laughs> again. That's okay. Yeah. So there's some people don't have a healthy bowel movement. Yeah. So the whole process of, you know, ingesting your food and. Ingesting your food. But I still want to know what causes, how the inflammation works in the body. If it's in the joints, if it's in the muscles, if it affects the organs, that subs digestion. So I still will have to get to run. If we're having all this trouble, we will keep pounding through it. Life goes on. But that's one of the things we have to do is to try to fix life as it goes on. And Tehran is here to give us this wonderful information about it. So... What we, are, what we are going through right now is Tehran was explaining to us how inflammation, in, based on the foods we eat, how it causes all these symptoms in our body. And, and our internet is going, doing its own thing, obviously. So we are having a little bit of difficulty with it tonight. So when Tehran comes back, we will see what we can do. I'll keep checking for him. But it was, the thing that we were talking about is how certain foods cause inflammation because it's physical prosperity. And what I do know about it is very little about that inflammation part. My diet is mostly a lot of fruits, vegetables, plant, a lot of plant foods. I love raw things, so I eat a lot of raw vegetables. I drink maybe four or five liters of water. I, I eat everything, but I don't eat... Uh, um, and I do try things like turmeric and all of that, all those type of things. So it's a little bit different. But people talk about inflammation in the body, and I don't understand it. And I found out there were a lot of others who, who don't understand. And I know ginger, garlic, onion, turmeric, they help to eliminate them or to eliminate the pressure on them. Um, what I'm looking at is and physical prosperity is the work we do now. I really do believe is the work you're doing when you're younger that causes you to be able to live a more physically active life when you're older. And my journey 
for physical activity started out of curiosity. I'm going to look for Tehran in the meantime. He's gone for good, <laughs> so we lost him again. Um, it started in, in, in my 20s. Well, not even quite deep into it, it was like 22. And there was a community center and a German lady was running these classes on yoga. And I went and she was the one that taught me yoga and I practiced it ever since in one form, shape or the other. Um, and one of the lessons she told me, she said, what you're doing now with yoga is that the things you're doing now, if you continue to do that and add some walking and more exercises and your health, watch what you eat. She said, I can guarantee you, you will have this amazing older age. And she said, and she said um, that one of the things that we can do is to make sure that we continue taking care of what, watching what we eat and all of that. And that is one of the things that I have been doing, I did all my life. I still eat most whatever, I drink whatever. If I'm with my brothers or my friends and they're having wine or I'm having wine or I'm having a, a drink of scotch, I'll have that. But I drink a lot of water. I eat a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables all the time. And I eat everything. I read, but I, I have a window of eating. And I do exercise every day. Today was funny because it was raining. And I chose to go because I know it's for my benefit. Those walks. I had a friend one who said, oh, her walk is no exercise. She just walks. She, doesn't, she walks fast. She doesn't walk fast. But my, my body got accustomed to that. My limbs got accustomed to that. My joints got accustomed to that. But I still need to have um, to run on. Even if I have to do this in the daytime, the pillar of physical prosperity, I need to understand inflammation in the body. I hear it so often. And so many people are telling me that inflammation causes cancer, it causes this. I want to know why inflammation, what causes inflammation? because they, they treat the symptom and nobody really tells me the cause. I want to know the cause so that I can say to somebody, okay, I'll let you do that. But we have to make a plan to have a live, maybe on Thursday. I really want to hammer down on inflammation to run. I want to understand inflammation better and for my own good and for the good of others. So we will have to put it on and send something on that. We're doing a thing on physical prosperity with the effect of certain foods causing inflammation in your body and what are the symptoms and whether we should be avoiding treating the cause by avoiding the things that cause this inflammation or are we just going to continue treating the symptoms? So my big thing was to bring him around to that and as he's getting into it, the internet went down. So we are going to get this because I hear a lot about it. I have done a little bit of research, and, but it's not my, my field, so I don't get it. Because they, I know garlic and onion and, and turmeric and cinnamon, and there's a lot of these foods that are, that are good for, for and preventing inflammation in the body. And I want to know where it is. Where, where does it go? Does it attack an organ? Is it in a joint? Because they said it's internal. Does it affect your, does it cause arthritis? So I, I, I want to know because physical prosperity is, as you get older, you need to understand it. And from this German lady, it was, she was really old, older. I was 22. When you're 22, everybody is 23 and up is old. But she was, you could see that. And she insisted on telling me about it. And she was really, she took a, a very good interest in all of us. And I continued to do the yoga she taught. I didn't know yoga, but it felt so good. And maybe that is why I love the manipulation of the body when you get a Thai massage and all of that. So tonight, we will meet again on this topic, Tehran. I have, we have to get it going. I want to know the cause what we do that causes the inflammation, what we ingest that causes the inflammation and, and the symptoms of it. And where are those symptoms? Is it only in the intestines? Is it in the bones? Is it in the joints? Where, does, where are these symptoms? And what it is we can do to treat the cause. I like treating the cause. 
myself. Like when I go to the doctor and he says something to me, I say, okay, fine. This is the co this is the symptom. What can I do to avoid the, what's causing that symptom? And usually, he, sometimes he looks at me like, you know, he, he's lost. But it, all doctors did that. I remember the doctor I had when I was younger and I was taking vitamins much, much younger when my children were babies. And I mentioned to her, I'm taking vitamins and giving the kids vitamin. And she looked at me like I had, like I came from Mars. I could see she was dumbfounded by what I'm saying. It's like, why are you saying that? Fast forward 20 years later, after she had had cancer, she had these vitamins that she was telling me about. And you know me, man, you know, I have a memory like an elephant, but then the sarcasm or the confusion, or I just couldn't keep my tongue in my mouth. I said, but when I told you I was taking vitamins 20 years ago, you, you looked at me like I, I, I was not a normal human being. And today you're telling me the value of, of, of vitamins. So come on, you know? And she said to me, well, as you know, I had cancer and that taught me. And when I told her about a book that I raised my kids on, Let's Have Healthy Children by Adele Davis, and back to Eden and this type of books. And, and she was just looking at me like, this woman is crazy. So 